Okay, this is a chemistry experiment, higher level 2012, question 3. And in this experiment, we are determining the relative molecular mass of a volatile liquid. So there's two ways of doing this. And we're going to be looking at what they call in this question, apparatus A. So we have a conical flask here. We put our volatile liquid inside of the conical flask. We put in some, uh, some uh, water and we're going to heat this on a hot plate. We've got a thermometer here, our boiling water, our aluminium foil, a rubber band around that aluminium foil and a pinhole. And if you're not too sure about what's going on in this experiment, you should watch the video explaining what's, uh, what's actually happening in this experiment, in the mandatory uh, experiment section. But for now, we're going to look at part A here. And it's asked us to give an example of a liquid suitable for use in this experiment. The answer to this would simply be acetone. So acetone is used in nail varnish remover. Okay, it has a low boiling point, which means it's volatile, which means it's suitable to use. Then in part B, we're to describe how, first of all, the mass and then second of all, the vapor of the, uh, sorry, the volume of the vapor is determined. So we're to describe how the mass of the vapor, uh, of the vapor was determined. Okay, so first off, we weighed the empty flask and all of the fittings. So the rubber band and the aluminium foil. We can call this weight one. Next, we heated up Sorry, next we added in our volatile liquid. Then we heated up the flask until all of the liquid was vaporized. Then we cool, uh, dry and reweigh the flask and now the condensed vapor which is inside of the flask. And we can call this weight two. Then we find the difference in weight. So weight two minus weight one is equal to the mass of the vapor. Then for part two, we're asked to describe how the volume of the vapor is determined. So to figure out the volume, we fill our conical flask completely with water, up to the very brim. And we empty all of that water into a graduated cylinder. And then we simply read the volume of the level of the water on the graduated cylinder. So that's fine. Then for part C, we are to explain why the pressure of the vapor is the same as atmospheric pressure. Well that's because we've got this pinhole here in our aluminium foil. And that means that the vapor is in contact with the air. So it's in contact with the atmosphere, so the pressure inside the container is the same as the pressure outside of the container. Now, onto some calculations. We're told that the, that the vapor of 0.63 grams of a pure liquid occupies a volume of 330 centimeters cubed at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius and at a pressure of 101 kilopascals. We're asked to calculate the number of moles of vapor and hence calculate the relative molecular mass of the volatile liquid. So the first part there we have to calculate the number of moles. So n, our number of moles, is equal to our question mark. We're told that we've got a mass of the vapor is equal to 0 0.63 grams. Then we're told we have got a volume of 330 centimeters cubed. The temperature in this experiment was 100 degrees Celsius. 
and we've got a pressure of 101 kilopascals. Now, we have to uh, decide on the equation to use in this experiment, or in this calculation. And if we look at our formula and tables booklet, on page 64, we can see we've got the, our universal gas equation, PV is equal to N or T. And that might fit very well with what we've got here. So we've got PV is equal to N or T. We can see that we've got pressure here, we've got volume, we're looking for the number of moles, we haven't got OR, or we haven't been explicitly given OR, but we can find OR. That's either going to be in your exam paper, or it's definitely going to be in your format and tables booklet. That is 8.3 joules per kelvin per mole. So we do have OR. And we've got temperature. But some of you may have recognized that there's something wrong here before we can jump in and use this equation. And that is our units. To use this value of R, we have to have very particular units that we use in this equation. Our pressure must be in pascals. But hold on here. We've got kilopascals. Our volume must be in meters cubed. But hold on here, our volume's in centimeters cubed. Temperature must be in Kelvin, and our temperature is in degrees Celsius. So a lot of our units here are wrong. We have to convert these units into uh, something else to make uh, this equation work. So we're going to start with our pressure. We have got 101 kilopascals. Now, if we look in our formula and tables booklet, on page 45 this time, we can see that kilo means that it's multiplied by 1000, 10 to the 3. So we have to multiply this by 1000 to change it into pascals. So we're going to go 101 multiplied by 1000 is going to equal 1. Zero, 01000 zero, zero, zero. now pascals that's a unit we can work with for this equation the next one we're going to change is our volume we're given a volume of 330 centimeters cubed we have to change this into meters cubed now First off, we need to recognize that there is 1,000 centimeters cubed in a liter and then 1,000 liters in a meter cubed. So let's write that down so it's a little bit simpler to visualize. So we've got 1,000 centimeters cubed in a liter. So let's change this into liters. We're going to divide it by 1,000 centimeters cubed per litre. Our centimetres cubed are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with 0 0.33 litres. Now again, similar conversion, there's 1,000 litres in a metre cubed. So now we're going to divide this by 1,000 litres per metre cubed. Our litres are going to cancel out. And we're going to be left with 3.3 .3 by 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed. So that's the unit that we can work with. Finally, we have to change our temperature. We're given a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. And to change that temperature we need to add our standard temperature so we need to add 273 k 
Kelvin. This is on page 64 of your tables. Did I say 263? I mean 273. Excuse me. So 100 plus 273 is equal to 373 Kelvin. So now we are in units that we can work with. So let's go ahead and use this equation. PV is equal to N or T. We're looking for the number of moles. Let's solve this for the number of moles. I'm going to flip this equation around just so that I've got N on the left hand side. So N or T is equal to PV. Now we want N all by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by or t because we want to lose that or t. So divided by or t again. We can see our or is going to cancel here and leave a 1. Our t is going to cancel here and leave a 1. And we're going to be left with n is equal to p v all over or t. Now we can go ahead and sub in our numbers into this equation. Our pressure was 101,000. Our volume is 3.3 .3 by 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed. Our ore was 8.3. And our temperature is 373 Kelvin. So when we solve this, we're going to get 0 0.01076 moles of our volatile liquid. And we can round this a little bit to 0 0.0108 moles of our volatile liquid. So that's the first part of that question solved. The next part of that question is we have to calculate the relative molecular mass. So the relative molecular mass of our volatile liquid. So we've got the number of moles And to do this, it's really uh, useful to look at the units. And the relative molecular mass is measured in grams per mole. Like our relative atomic mass, it's in grams per mole. So this is, our units here are actually telling us what to do. This is telling us that the relative molecular mass is equal to the grams of our volatile liquid divided by the number of moles of our volatile liquid. That's what our unit is telling us. And we were actually told the mass of our volatile liquid was equal to 0 0.63 grams. So now, this is actually quite a simple uh, problem when we look at our unit here. So we're going to divide our grams, 0 0.63 grams, by the number of moles, 0 0.0108 moles. And that's going to equal 58.33 grams per mole. We can see our units tell us that we're correct. And that's the answer to that part. Now, Part E. Why is this method unsuitable for liquids that are non-volatile? Well, quite simply, we're boiling water here and water only goes to 100 degrees Celsius. If we were using a liquid that wasn't volatile, that wasn't easy to vaporise, 100 degrees Celsius 
wouldn't be hot enough um, to completely vaporize it. So simply put, what they're looking for on the marking scheme here is they do not vaporize easily. That's fine to say. Or you could say that they do not have a low boiling point. That's equally fine for your tree marks there. Now, what modern instrumental technique could be used as a more accurate method to measure the relative molecular mass of volatile and non-volatile liquids as well as that of solids and gases, uh, gaseous substances. And that instrumental technique is called a mass spectrometer. So that's what they're looking for there. And that is that question solved. Now, what I want you to do is try the chemistry higher level uh, question 2003, question three. Very similar question and it'll give you a chance to uh, put into practice what you've just learned in this video.